Well, Albert Moeller has responded to the Beggs controversy to whether a Christian can attend a same-sex marriage. And he does it indirectly because a question, or actually several questions of this nature, came to him and he addressed it on his podcast. Let's give him a listen. Should Christians attend a same-sex wedding ceremony or same-sex wedding? And the first thought that came to my mind is this isn't hard. This isn't really hard at all. And it's not hard because of what a wedding is. A wedding is a celebration. A wedding is a covenant ceremony of one sort or another. It may be confused, but it's a covenant ceremony. It's being declared as the formal public declaration of a thing. And uh, that thing is a marriage and uh, or a union. And, uh, And that's where Christians understand that it's not just that we think the same-sex marriages are wrong. It's that we don't think same-sex marriages are marriages. We actually don't think it is. It doesn't fit the biblical criterion. It doesn't fit creation order. And uh, I, I had to raise it a second time in response to Houston Pastor Joel Osteen. He made a couple of public statements, and one of them had to do with uh, whether he would attend a same-sex wedding ceremony. And, uh, well, I think he failed in the answer. Albert Moeller now brings up Joel Olstein, who addressed this topic with Piers Morgan on CNN. Let's give it a listen. What do you think of all this, the, the gay marriage debate? I mean, could you ever imagine attending a gay marriage between two people who come to your church, for example, if they invited you? So would you accept one or not? To, would I accept one? Two gay people who attend your church invite you to their wedding. Um, sure, I would go. You would? Well, I don't, you know, if I had time, I would. (laughs) If they were friends of mine and I respect them, I would certainly go. You would watch two people you think are sinners committing the ultimate sin. Well, I'm looking at it. I don't think it's the ultimate sin, but I'm looking at it from another point of view of respect to that person. And, you know, it's, you know, it gets convoluted, but I'm looking at it as respect to that person. Could you, could you in your position actually actively encourage people to go through a same sex marriage? Could you be seen to do it? Could you be photographed at such an event? Well, I would, would that not. that cause you problems? Well, you know, it, there's, it's such a hypothetical. And I'm talking well, about... Well, not really, because you said lots of gay people go to your church. So it might happen. Well, I haven't been to many weddings lately to begin with. But I'm talking about somebody that was, you know, dear to us. I'm not going to disrespect somebody that's dear to us and say, you know what, you're not good enough for us or something like that. That's the way I would see it now. I'm not going to just run off and go to attend, you know, certain marriages just to make a statement because that's not who I am and that's not what I stand for. And again, I don't look down on those people. Even Piers Morgan sees the response of Joel Olstein and his wife as ludicrous and contradicting their Christian belief. He's shocked by their response. But let's go back to Albert Moeller's response to that question, can a Christian go to a same-sex marriage. And so because that was a part of public conversation, I had reporters call me and ask me what my position was on it. Uh, I'd already written on it, but I said, you know, I'm going to go further. And so I published two articles in 2011 on this question. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to make as a point is, again, that a wedding is not like a meal. A wedding is not like a conversation. A wedding is a ceremony And, you know, historically, those who have participated in the ceremony, and by that I mean even just those who are in the congregation, they're described as witnesses and celebrants to the wedding. That is to say, they're there to celebrate. And affirmation of the union is historically, and I think biblically, crucial to what a wedding is all about. You know, it's one of the reasons why The most foundational language in terms of marriage in Western civilization, the most foundational language in the English-speaking world is the language of the Book of Common Prayer. And even those who by no means use the Book of Common Prayer for worship, uh, most Protestants use some version of the language of the Book of Common Prayer in the solemnization and the celebration of marriage. And, And that's why almost everyone recognizes the language. If there be anyone here who knows any reason why these two should not be lawfully wed, let him speak now or forever hold his peace. Well, you know, that wasn't unexpected language. That's not incidental language. And that comes up again and again in weddings. If you're here, you're here because you think this is right. If you're here, you believe this is a marriage. And when it comes to Christians uh, looking at a same-sex ceremony, whatever they're going to call it, we don't believe that it's right. We can't celebrate it. 
And we actually don't believe it's marriage. So we can't bear false witness about marriage because it's not going to be particularly healthy to think this through when you have an invitation in your hand. You need to think this issue through long before you get an invitation. And you need to think this through in biblical terms, which is not just about whether you should go or not, but why. And and then, you know, what else is important to this context? Because if you're invited to a wedding, and here's something we just need to acknowledge. If you're invited to a wedding, there must be some relationship with at least one of the parties in this ceremony. And so I think it's emphatically true that Christians do not want to have no relationship. It, or to put it another way, it is not true that Christians should seek to avoid any relationship with someone who's identified as LGBTQ or someone who is in some kind of same-sex relationship. Uh, but there's a category distinction between, you know, fostering a relationship and uh, even, say, sharing a meal and table fellowship. There's, there is a categorical distinction between that and being a celebrant in a ceremony. That, that, that's a, a categorical distinction, and I, I think that's important, and I'm going to make that argument. I've, I've made it consistently now for well over a decade, and I, I think that's one that's deeply rooted in the Christian tradition, I think, and in the nature of a wedding. And, uh, you know, there are witnesses in, uh, in every state I know of, there are witnesses that have to sign that the wedding uh, is legitimate and lawful. And uh, those who are attending are the larger circle of those who are in agreement with that. And uh, so I think that, that emphatically means that that's the one place that Christians, I think, should not be. And I think we, we need to decide that up front. And, uh, you know, a further complexity comes with uh, the question, well, are there circumstances that may say you would go to this but not go to that? Is this a relationship that, you know, is particularly important? And I would simply say, I think this is one of those issues in which we need to recognize this is not context-dependent. Uh, that is to say, uh, the moral distinction is not between that same-sex ceremony and this same-sex ceremony. The categorical distinction is between marriage and uh, ceremonies that celebrate what is not marriage and can't be from a Christian biblical perspective. Albert Moeller really tackles this question from two points of view. First, from a Christian perspective, a same-sex marriage is not a marriage at all. Because a marriage, according to the Bible, according to the Christian worldview, is one man, one woman, till death do them part. So we cannot define marriage and how our culture defines marriage. But from a Christian perspective, a marriage is between one man and one woman. The second point that I want to highlight that Albert Moeller brings out is that when we as Christians go to a same-sex marriage, we are witnessing and approving that marriage. So we cannot approve something that God has not approved. We can't approve sin. We can't uh, testify that any sort of sin is good or right. Therefore, we cannot attend a same-sex marriage. Thanks for watching, and God bless.